Hey, I'm Laura. Just quickly, we here at Grit TV are proud to bring you independently produced content every day. Now it's your chance to help us. Grit TV has been offered a $100,000 challenge grant. Every dollar you give right now between now and June 30th is worth $3 to us. We've only got a few more weeks to meet the match. Will you help? You can donate at our website, grittv.org. Meanwhile, enjoy this clip. First off, facing the utter disaster in the Gulf, most people in the U.S. seem still to be waiting for the president to lead. But in those so-called developing countries, something else seems to be happening. Read the African or Latin American newspapers, and they're full of activists calling Americans bluff. Don't like it when it happens to you? They're citing the United States and the U.K. reaction to the Gulf disaster as justification for reparations for people like them whose lands have been destroyed by multiple multinationals in the Niger Delta, Ecuador, even Peru. Amazon Watch is challenging multinational oil companies' rights to drill in indigenous lands under free trade agreements. One Nigerian leader is quoted as saying, quote, it's a paradox that the current oil spill in the Mexican Gulf is attracting so much outcry from the American public and leadership but an American oil company is doing worse damage and poisoning the lives of hundreds of millions of Nigerians who depend on fish as the cheapest source of protein, and nobody's talking about it. What's happening here, by contrast? We have election madness. We'll talk about it coming up with Kerry Harrison of KPFK in Los Angeles. And I would impeach him. And if that's not enough, some of you men own taverns. Sam, you are a brewer. Mr. President, a distiller. You know how tough it is to run a small business without a tyrannical government on your back. Today, we have an internal revenue service that enforces what they call a progressive income tax. You'll love this. Every year, if not every quarter, we're basically required to spy on ourselves, report what we earn, who we hire and fire, with an all-powerful separate court system. Without representation, they can increase taxes, add costly regulation, or perform malicious audits. Now this same IRS is gonna force us to buy health insurance. Cram it down our throats or else. Now I took an oath to defend that with my life. Now, I can't stand by while these evils are perpetrated. You gentlemen revolted over a T-tax. A T-tax. Now look at us. Are you with me? Gather your armies. Oh, are you with him? Corey Harrison, welcome to the program. Glad to have you, Kerry. What about this? I mean, this is a guy running for office in Alabama. Uh, pretty good ad, I have to say, with him confronting the, the freedom fighters of the Revolutionary War. But my goodness, this is what we're seeing this election season. Around the world, you've got people rebelling against corporate capitalism. What are we doing here? Well, I think first we're enjoying a wonderful history lesson. Uh, I didn't really realize that we fought it over a tea tax, since a lot of the tea was actually owned by John Hancock himself, another American who lost a lot of money that day. But that notwithstanding, um, I'm thrilled that two of my ancestors who signed the Declaration of Independence were sitting in that room wearing wigs and little gowns and such in the great state of Alabama, which is known famously for Yellow Mama, the electric chair. So I think the elevator only goes up from here. But what about this bigger point of where the level of re where the rebellion is in this country? I mean, I'm seeing a massive gap between rich and poor, fury at some level against sort of corporate executives. And then, excuse me, but California just voted for two of the worst of them, if you don't mind me saying so, this one, for example. So while Barbara Boxer comes to California to tout the impact of the stimulus bill, the reality is that the unemployment situation in California has deteriorated since the passage of the stimulus bill. We are destroying jobs, and we're destroying them because of a government that is too big, taxes that are too high, regulations that are too thick. So this election is about jobs, but it's also about out-of-control government. I mean, that she's blaming the stimulus for unemployment. I mean, this is a woman who laid off 28,000 people while she was drawing down a salary of 100 million, I think. Uh, what's going on with the voters out there with you, Kerry? Well, I would love to take credit for it, but I'm not going to. Um, one of the things we have going here is classic prestidigitation. It is sleight of hand in politics that goes back to, you know, Jeffrey Chaucer and the Miller's Tale. It's, it's ribald. It's a joke. But it's effective, just like uh, what we saw with our friend in Alabama. You're talking to people 
who have been conspicuously de-educated over the past few decades and will believe anything that adult supervision provides to them. And when you get these captains of business, whether it's Meg Whitman or Fiore or whoever these people are who have run eBay and, and Hewlett Packard into the ground, you know, it's time to bring that thinking right to California. And people don't know. They're afraid. And as you know, one of the interesting models that these people use is an equation of um, uh, E over I, emotion over intellect. And one of the things that you do, Laura, is you do I over E. That's why their ratings are so much better than mine. <laughs> and so it's a much harder battle. If all you have to do is yell, there's a snake in the room, and everyone jumps up on a chair, you just won. And there is content is irrelevant. So this is what we're dealing with. Unfortunately, it really does work because we're, we're mammals at the end of the day. We're emotional. And if we're told xenophobically that there's some grim, shadowy figure about to enter in and, you know, clobber granny, we're likely to do all kinds of unwholesome things for us, for her, for you. Well, we're supposed to go after the snake, not the granny. But, but nonetheless, there's a story in the paper today about Meg Whitman. You mentioned her earlier. She apparently shoved a co-worker at some point. There were legal proceedings begun, but then settled. I've been trying to decide all morning, would this be a bigger story or a smaller story if she was a guy? And is it a story? Um, well, if she were a guy, it would probably play out the way, uh, I think it was yesterday, uh, the congressman from whichever state it was, uh, pushing some kid, trying to interview him on a camcorder, going, who are you, who are you? And then grabs the kid by the throat. That ends up becoming a small story. Um, the Meg Whitman thing, because she's female, she's going to have a lot more, a lot deeper scrutiny. And, you know, male activity, female activity. But it's interesting, in politics, it sort of merges. Like Nancy Pelosi can more or less do what anybody else would do. But can Meg Whitman, as a CEO, do it? It's almost expected for her to once again display this kind of testosteronal behavior. Well, you mentioned testosteronal behavior, and there was a, a distinct lack of it in the Senate today where um, General Petraeus was testifying, I think maybe about mineral wealth or something that he's obviously an expert on in Afghanistan. He was quoted talking about it in the New York Times this week. He fainted, passed out, and then claimed sort of Lindsay Lohan style that it was dehydration. Um, what do you make of that? We're, we're talking a trillion dollars, honey, right? I'd faint, too, if I were in charge of extracting that. I mean, this whole notion of we had no idea. Sure, you know, silver from Afghanistan in 1923 was really quite valuable. All this stuff is, we had no idea, right? And also the notion that Petraeus is sitting there and nobody brought him a glass of water. When was the last time you fainted from dehydration? Well, my real question is, what does it mean for Obama? I mean, this is a guy who in part is meant to be part of the message sending around stay the course. He couldn't stay it even through his right. testimony. Finally, right. um, we're going to be talking in the next part of the program about the Chevron Corporation. You caught a glimpse of them recently out and proud at Gay Pride in L.A. You know, if that didn't sound as ridiculous as it really is, it really happened that way. I am holding a souvenir, which you're going to covet, and I know you're going to want me to send this to you, and I will. This is my official Chevron fan because I am a fan of Chevron now. What they've done so brilliantly is these desperate huge oil corporations, particularly on the tails of BP, have been hiring huge public relations firms saying, well, what can we do? We're desperate. We need to. And Gay Pride in Los Angeles here pulls in three, four, five hundred thousand people. And we end up in a big cage. It's kind of exciting. And so right in the middle, as you walk in, in first position is Chevron Oil with one of these spin wheels that goes tick, 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 tick and stops and you get a prize. They're giving away metal pens. I mean, really expensive stuff. So they had the gay folks lined all the way down, and then you end up with like 400,000 gay people fanning themselves with the Chevron logo. And let me show you something. We've only got about because 10 seconds left, Perry. Chevron pride. Yeah, 
Well, I hope that That's they have their banner. I hope that they have the same success at Gay Pride in Utah, where I think they just polluted most of the ponds and rivers. Thanks so much, Gary Harrison. You can catch him on KPFK Pacifica Station, Los Angeles afternoons, 3 p.m. And a link at our website, grittv.org.